This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake it. Wake your fuck ass up. This thing we call the music business, Heather B. It's more than just a business for many of us. Mm-hmm. Some of us, it's a passion. Mm-hmm. There you go. It's about a culture. It's about something that's intangible that changes people's lives, that changes their moods. Mm. You know, that changes their destinies, that changes their goals, that sometimes change the way they look at love, the way they look at war, pain, all sorts of emotions music encapsulates. When it's done correctly, oh, man, it could really uplift you. And when you meet someone who understands music first, business second, then you're coming across what we call a unicorn, something that's rare you don't see often. Mm. And our next guest has written a book. Well, he's put a lot of gems in this book, Heather B. A lot of folks are confused about what to do with themselves, what to do in this music business, especially at this time. Mm -hmm. And in this book, he takes it back to the essence when he was just a child in a family that was about music, whether performing, writing, whatever the case may be, whether it's listening to it. He wrote a book called Sing to Me, My Story of Making Music, Finding Magic, and Searching for Who's Next. Mm. The reason why I have the beat, because just off the top of my head, he's been involved in so many careers, uh, whether it's Pink, uh, whether it's Justin Bieber, whether it's Usher, whether it's TLC, uh, Kanye West, Mariah Carey, uh, Yo Gotti. Uh, the list goes on and on. His own career, The Deal. Wow. Uh, Tony Braxton. We just had the lovely Tony Braxton up here recently. Easily. Uh, one of the most respected, uh, one of the most revered, one of the most passionate people this music business has ever seen, and he's here with us today, the one and only Mr. L.A. Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. that's a build-up. Wow, that's too much of a build-up. Man, I didn't even do you justice. I don't know how to. What do we say behind that? That's just too much. We say, you know what, man? Just you don't have to say anything. Mm-hmm. We're gonna say thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, you know, thank you, absolutely. Yeah. And then, thank you. and for putting it all in the book, man. I was just reading. You could just go through the pictures alone, mm-hmm. and the pictures tell a story. Every page you turn on, I'm looking at, you know, um, Outcast from the 2000 Stankonia, uh, when they would talk about the release of the 2000 Stankonia uh, project yes. back in 2000. Um, but I, when I think of Outkast, it's indicative to your career. Um, when they first came out with Southern Playalistic Cadillac Music, yes, this was at a time when they went against the grain of everything that everybody believed mm-hmm. to be that Atlanta sound, right? Right. Um, right. That's right. Um, if you think about it back then, what they were doing, we weren't hearing a lot. We didn't. We were when they first came out. We were all being introduced to the Dungeon Family, really in the forefront. Right. And they change things. They disturb things. They move that needle. Exactly right. You know, is that That's exactly it, right? And and I, I want to get into your history as a musician, but just as a, a music guy, is that what you look for an artist? Uh, you know what? I, I I think I just got really lucky. If I'm honest, right? Okay. I got really lucky because uh, when I first heard Outkast, uh, after they'd been signed, and I listened to like their first batch of demos, it was really really good. The record sounded good. Interestingly, they sounded a little bit like they were soulful. Yeah, it didn't sound like uh, like New York hip hop, mm-hmm. which is can be soulful, but theirs was more piano and you know it was lush yeah. almost. Yeah, uh, and then they morphed into this crazy band, Outcast. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, and I didn't encourage it. All I did was protected them mm-hmm. and made sure that no one meddled with them as they made their music. So if they made something and someone says that's that's sort of breaking the mold. I would protect them and say, no, if if they don't like what you're doing, I think you might be doing it right, you know. Um, so so it was more yeah. of that. But I really got lucky. You Those got guys. lucky. Okay, L.A. Reid, L.A. Reid. He said yeah, lucky. First, first, first rap group I'd ever signed. Yeah. Wow. First yeah. rap artist I'd ever signed. Mm-hmm. And, and I came straight from, I came straight from the R&B and soul music mm-hmm. and pop music. And I didn't even know what it was. Yeah. This girl said to me once, she said, do you know what hip hop is? I was like, no, what's that? Right? That's mm-hmm. how far That's removed it. I was. But not because I was a cornball, it's because I was so ingrained in what I was doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I didn't pull my head up out of the sand. And when I finally pulled it up, I saw Outcast. 
Wow, that's incredible. Let's talk. Yeah. What were you doing at that? Was that the TLC days or what, what was? Uh, this was um, what? Well, I started really getting into hip hop before, before TLC. Before okay. it was actually before I signed Outkast. Okay, you okay. know the first hip hop record I ever put out was uh, "Hot Sex on the Platter" by Tribe Called Quest on the a Boomerang, Boomerang soundtrack. On the Boomerang soundtrack. Yeah, that was yeah. the very first one, and that was because Rosie Perez said, "Yo, you need some hip hop on here, right?" Yeah. <laughs> What's that? So Tribe Called Quest was yeah. the first. Yeah. Wow, L.A. Reed is here. Now, did you start by playing instruments at home, or when when did you decide this yeah. is where my passion lies? Um, yeah, I, very early. I started playing drums when I was like eight or nine years old mm-hmm. and played all my life. And then I can't really play piano. I'm horrible at it. But I, I <laughs> played a little bit just so I could write. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. and and then later on, I met Babyface and started writing songs with him. You know, um, but yeah, but I've been playing music like all my life. Babyface, um, <clears throat> I only think of you on two occasions. Yes, that's day and night. This was one to me, one of the best love songs ever written. Thank you. By Thank the you. deal, L.A. Readers here. Let's listen to that. Can we listen? To this? Let's listen. The deal right there. L.A. Reed wow. is here. The book is called Sing to Me. Look, everything you would like to know and more about his career um, is in this book. The deal, you know, with the success, you know, Babyface and Tony Braxton being, you know, getting a Grammy, you know, right. recently uh, for the, their recent work. Um, is the deal going to get back together? I've been hearing rumors about the deal <laughs> doing a, a reunion thing. Man, I haven't played in the band since 1988. It's time. Right, and um, I walked into, this is a true story, I was at work, I was at Epic Records, mm-hmm. I walked into an office, two young ladies, didn't see me walk in, were having the ball, singing two occasions with the record playing, and I walked in and I saw it, and then they noticed that I was in the room, and I said, do you guys, you, you really know this song? They were like, this is our song, and then I said, maybe it's time. It's time, man. Get just, just for you know, just for one, like, just for one moment. I yeah. can't do it. Yeah. I mean, if I'm being honest, it just doesn't pay enough. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but I'm gonna do it for fun. <laughs> you gonna do it for fun? <laughs> All right, L.A. Real. L.A. Reed is here. There's a um, if if LaFace LaFace Records kind of really helped catapult everything Atlanta when it mm-hmm. came to the um, music business. Um, all the artists you whose career uh, you touched. And um, who, who was the first artist signed to Love Face Records? The very first artist signed was uh, a duo called Damien Dame. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they both since passed away, but you know we, we made one album on them. Mm-hmm. Um, and we really liked the album. Uh, they didn't become a massive success. Uh, but, but you know, the thing about Atlanta is this the gift that keeps on giving? There's so much talent in Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, it was 1989 when we moved there mm-hmm. and started signing talent, started signing Tony, or uh, TLC, or Outkast, or uh, Usher, and 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 many many others from there. But even years years later, I was signing, you know, Young Jeezy, mm-hmm. or or now Future, mm-hmm. you know, and and it's like the gift that keeps on giving. I don't know what's in the water in Atlanta or what's in that red clay. Yeah. But it's healthy. It's healthy, right? Yeah, it uh, is. Absolutely. You got to the point where you started, I don't know if outperforming your mentor is the right word to use, but um, uh, Clive Davis yes. um, being, being that mentor. But you got to a point where his boss sat you down and said, we want you to take over, right? Arista. Yeah, that's a rare occasion. Arista right? record. So, don't count on that keeping it on happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> When that and that happened at your house, he came to your home, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. And and said, "I want you get put picture this, the future of this company is you taking over Arista, which was actually distributing the face at that time. Correct. They were our distributor. They were your distributor, yes. ran by Clive Davis. Keith Napley was there. Right. Uh, uh, Keith Sidebars, who put me in radio years ago. On it came KML in in San Francisco. Wow. Oh my God! And that's how I got started on that. Is that right? In the heyday, so. 
when Outcast was breaking, <sighs> what a story that was happening in the Bay. Right. Yeah, absolutely. We'll talk, man. We go to lunch. Oh, we got to do that. You got to go to lunch. We got to oh, go to yeah. lunch. I know, <laughs> That's a story. I know all the secrets. I know all the secrets. <laughs> That's a story. Okay. I want that story. Yeah. But yes. you you did, in, in in many cases, what, you know, you kind of ushered Diddy in to do, you know, where you had to take that leap of faith and almost surpass your boss and take this position, which could have been career ending. What was that moment like for you at that time? Uh, it was bittersweet, you know, okay. it, because I wasn't sure if it was... Uh, Look, I didn't have a lot of choices. I lived in Atlanta. I'm a black man from Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. I've worked really, really hard. Um, and I didn't really know what success was or or, or really what uh, the next step was after, mm -hmm. you know, LaFace. And the truth is I loved LaFace, but I'd been in Atlanta for about 10 or 11 years. I wasn't from Atlanta. And we were having such massive success that I was becoming a little bit bored, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, just a little bit bored. I started you know, investing in stupid stuff. Like you know, I was getting restaurants to go out of business and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know money on nothing. buying restaurants just so you could have a table. I mean, it was just yeah. dumb. Yeah. You know, yeah. It was just <laughs> dumb. You know, um, Ballers. So, so, you know, I went to school. I went back to school and, mm -hmm. and I took a business course, at, an MBA course at Harvard. Mm -hmm. And when it was completed, um, I was presented the opportunity to take over Arista Records. When I came to the city, um, it it there it was not a celebration mm -hmm. right it wasn't it wasn't a uh it, it i thought it was was going to be like a celebration i thought i was going to land in new york city and the whole town was going to be cheering mm -hmm. right and and i had a rude awakening and i realized wow i'm really from down south like yeah. this is <laughs> this is different you know yeah. um the media didn't love it the industry didn't love it uh, but it was, it was, it was for me the next step in my career. So I was very happy to do it and I took on the job and I merged LaFace with Arista mm -hmm. and the next set of projects were, uh, Pink. Yes. And Avril Lavigne mm -hmm. and Outkast Thinkonia. This is before the Speaker Box Love Below. Mm -hmm. And Usher had a big album called 8701, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, you think, you know, yeah. So, <laughs> so we immediately had like really like great success, but it was largely the artists that I'd already signed at LaFace. Uh -huh. T.I. was one of them, by yeah. the way, right? Um, you know, but but the actual Arista artists that were there was, at the time, Whitney Houston mm -hmm. and Aretha Franklin, Kenny G. Was Alicia Keys there yet? Alicia Keys was signed there, uh -huh. and I met Alicia very early in her career. Uh -huh. um, and I love Alicia because she said to me, she said, I, I would love to stay on the label with you, but Peter Edge signed me, uh -huh. and I want to continue on that journey. And I said, I respect your loyalty. Mm. Uh -huh. And and that was the, and so she went with Peter Edge and became Alicia Keys. Uh -huh. But I respect her to this day because there were no games. She didn't play games with me. She was uh -huh. very straightforward. Uh -huh. She said, I just I love what you're doing. I respect you, but I want to stay on the course that I'm on. Pink, when yeah. Pink first came out as an artist, she was more a R and B artist than she was a yeah. crossover pop artist. That's right. Was that your direction, or why? Why did she? I think that was the Atlanta direction. Sway. She came to Atlanta and mm -hmm. and she worked with you know our people, all the people that we had working oh. there. Mm -hmm. Candy Burris was one of them. So Candy Burris actually wrote her first hit. It was mm -hmm. called "There You Go." There You Go. Mm -hmm. And Candy had just written "No Scrubs" for TLC and "Bills, Bills, Bills" for Destiny's Child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she was one of our writers. You know. Um, uh, in our crew, in our Atlanta crew. So mm -hmm. Pink came and sort of picked up on all of that. Uh, but then when she, after she had success, Pink kind of took over her own career and then she became more of a pop, even a little alternative leaning. Yeah. Yeah. You you said, I'm just going to go through things while I got you here because I know your time is uh, limited. Um, in, in a conversation um, you had with Kanye West and it was the first time you heard 808 and Heartbreaks. Right. Yes. And, and and you told him, well, I'll let you say, do you remember what you told him? No, I don't okay. remember. Okay. I, okay. I, by the way, I haven't, I, my book is called Sing to Me. You should read it. I haven't, but you should read it. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I read it, L.A. Reed. Okay. <laughs> and and you, well, you talked about um, how that sound and his approach to the music, it was Mother Just Passed. It was something different from what they thought was going to be released. And you felt like that revolutionized musically um, at that time the approach to making rap music. And yes, I, I believe. Like I think Kanye West is the most daring, the most innovative, the most creative 
uh, uh, perhaps of of all of the artists I've ever met. Okay. Um, and because being coming from hip hop, there really are like musically there are rules. Aesthetically, there are rules. There are just things you do, things you don't do, right? And if you think about it, whether it's in pop music or alternative rock or you know, there aren't the same rules. You could be crazy. You could do anything, right? Mm -hmm. Wear mm -hmm. your hair any kind of way, do anything. But in hip hop, it's like, ah, you can't do that. You can't do this. Or, or, or we, as a people, we tend to frown upon it. Mm -hmm. Kanye broke all the rules, and then he broke the rules musically. You know, with 808. And when I heard it, I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be your career defining record. And I said, I don't know if it's going to be your biggest record. Mm -hmm. It's going to be your career defining record because you opened it up. You opened, you, you took away all of the rules. You broke every rule, whether it was the, uh, what's that funny thing you put in your, the voice thing? Auto, auto tune. Yeah, Paul that, Fuder. You know, he was using the, that auto tune thing. Mm -hmm. It was the beats. It was emotional. Yeah. Right? Uh, there were love songs. There were heartbreak songs. It was just a different approach altogether, right? Um, and I don't know. I have so much respect for Kanye. I mm -hmm. just think he's the greatest. What, what would you say to, um, okay, I'm going to keep jumping subjects. Yes, too. Okay. okay um, I, and I like that chapter you talked about Kanye. There's a really friendly picture of him in the book, too. He's actually smiling. <laughs> um, nice. He's a that. friendly guy. He he's really is. He's a friendly is. guy. Yep, right. He yells at people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Steve Jobs yelled at people. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. You, are you a yeller, LA? All right. Uh, By the way, does Sway yell at people? Y'all just let me know right now. <laughs> no. Say something, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, well, I remember when MTV first started, and there was a song that called uh, 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 Video Room Killed the Radio Killed Star. The radio star. That yeah. Was the first video I they ever played that. on MTV. Um, in terms of social media in this digital age, we, we know the pros, but what do you think the cons have been? Um, I think it's pretty apparent that it's overexposure, right? Mm -hmm. And and there's something about stardom that, that has mystique, right? And the mystique makes people more interesting. And I think that social media allows people to be a little too common, a little bit too in your face, too often, and there are no questions to ask, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and and I don't and I don't know that we aspire to be common. So there was a time when we looked up to stars, <laughs> right? Because they weren't common. There was something special about them. they were. They, what did you say? They were unicorns, they right? Were unicorns, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, they're rare. Yeah. They're rare. Yeah. Well, we. I don't know that we aspire to 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 copy common people. Yeah. That certainly is not anyone's goal. Mm -hmm. You know what my goal is? My goal is to be common. <laughs> That's not American, right? Yeah. So so I think that it's it's just too much exposure. Um, it works for some. The beauty of it is that because it's so much, the star that comes along that says, no, I'm not going to go that route, mm -hmm. becomes very special. Mm -hmm. Becomes very special, Adele. right? Yeah. Um, do you Adele. She's one of those. She's one of those, yeah, right? She's one. Um, how do you feel as a music guy? Like we, we, we. I, I wrestle with this every day. I won't even say we. There's so much music um, that's being released on a day to day basis, where each artist is sounding like the artist they idolize most. Yeah. So you get ten different songs from ten different artists, but it sounds like one long extended right, right. club mix or something. <laughs> yeah, How do you do? What do you? What is your, you know, artists who uh, they say imitation is the biggest form of flattery, but yeah, eh. it's always been that way though. Yeah. Yeah, always been that way. When James Brown came out, there were a lot of James Brown copies. I remember them, right? But they didn't make it. Yeah. Or or you remember Michael Jackson and Jackson 5 came. There was like another boy band, almost yeah. just like them, copy band, right? The, was it the Fosters? Silver. The, 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 the Foster Silver? The Silvers? Yeah. The Osmonds. The Osmonds. The Osmonds. Right. Oh, oh, I didn't count that. <laughs> oh, there's always, there always been copies. The, the you know? Osmonds. <laughs> you know, there's always been a, there's always been copies. I remember yeah. Prince came out. Man, there was so many Princes out there, yeah. and they didn't make it. You know, so I think that's just how it goes. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably more music in the marketplace than ever, mm -hmm. but there's not more great music in the marketplace. It's about the same. It's about the same. Yeah. Mm. This book seemed to me the story of making music, finding magic, and searching for who's next. You got... A lot of who's next under your umbrella right now. Who are some of those new artists? I like to think so, man. Yo Gotti, man. Yo. He's been grinding for so long, man, but he is he's popping right now. That's I'm our so happy homie. for Yo Gotti. It goes down in the D. DM. Oh my Love gosh. Yo Gotti. All right. You know, Travis Scott, 
Mm-hmm. You know, he's also, you know, he's having a big hit right now. Yeah. Uh, but he's been grinding for a long time, and I, I expect great things from him, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even Future, as great as Future is, I don't think he's peaked yet. You no. know, I don't yeah. think he's become the big star that he will become. Yeah. You know, so I, I expect great things from him. Was Bobby Smurder, was that your artist? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What, now, what is the, you, you, the label got a lot of backlash because people That's yeah, interesting. Like, like, we committed a crime, right? Yeah. Well, that's people feel like the label backed out on him once he got in trouble, but that's yeah. that kind of trouble is probably what got him signed. You know, talking no, about no, his song got him signed. The song got him signed. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I like the song. The song was a hit record, so okay. we picked up the record and it became a hit. Mm-hmm. Um, and the truth is, I don't really know what happened exactly. What happened with Bobby? Yeah. Um, but I I, I know that he's in jail, mm-hmm. and I don't. You know, I, I hope he gets out. I hope he gets out soon. Yeah. You know, I've tried to help, actually. I've tried a lot of times to help. How, how would you try to help? Like, cause people don't think you guys did anything for him. Well, we're not supposed to talk about what we do. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, 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 you know, right. that's, that's, that's but, grown folks' business. But you try. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> One of the funniest stories I've, I've ever heard was um, um, a story that I was at the Revolt Conference. And and you were on stage speaking, and you and P Diddy shared a moment when when uh <laughs> well both you guys were, seemed like y'all both were out on your luck when it came to the business. You know, right. you know what story I'm talking about? Yeah, no, basically we went out on we went out on vacation. <laughs> okay, you know, and he said, "Man, I had a hard year, and I just need some quiet time." Yeah, I said, "Okay, cool. So we'll go on a boat, right? We'll just take take and we'll cruise and have a quiet time, some meditative time, and <laughs> and you know." And it turned into like the biggest party of my life. And, <laughs> and, I mean, within days, within yeah. hours, actually. Uh-huh. And, and um, you know, I chartered it, so it was in my name, and we got kicked off the boat. And Damn. I was stuck with the bill. Uh-huh. You know, it took a little time for me to collect, <laughs> you know, from my partner. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but we had a great time. You had a great time. It was memorable. It was, yeah. Except I couldn't charter anymore. They were like, no, we can't. But they would charter, let Mr. Combs charter every year. But they were like, no, you? I was like, me? <laughs> like, I'm not the party guy. Hey, well, it was a party boat and it was in your name. But so the, 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 what I got from that, it, it was great to know that people at that level communicate and mentor each other yeah. you know mm-hmm. and you you've Absolutely. had a, you you've had an opportunity to mentor a lot of folks and i'm sure there's a lot of stories we won't hear about but there are a lot of great stories in this book you yeah, know you have to yeah. yeah you have to read it yeah. and you know what it's this this book is really about um how i felt going through many many things because the truth is i mean as all the years i've known you we haven't mm-hmm. actually had this kind of conversation That's because true. i haven't really spoken Mm-hmm. about a lot of things that I've experienced. And, um, you know, so this book is really about how I felt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and going through the Michael Jackson or going through the, you know, those Diddy days or mm-hmm. going through the time with Island Def Jam or mm-hmm. going through the early days struggling with my band. It's really about how I felt more than it is about, like, who helped me or who I helped. Yeah. You know, those are those are like the stories, but the truth is it's an emotional book. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate your transparency in this book, man. L.A. Reed, ladies and gentlemen. One of the greatest. Yeah. One of the greatest. I'm getting so much trouble with this book. (laughs) (laughs) This is great, man. Thank you for. Do you ever want to do a part two? Come on by, man. I have to rush it in like 25 minutes. All right. I'll be back. Okay, cool. L.A. Reed, we want to thank Tank for coming by this morning. Yep. Um, Megan. Megan Good and Devon Franklin for coming by this morning as well. Yeah, DJ Reg. So DJ, I miss Megan good. You mix you miss yeah. Megan, but she she left the book. I'll give you hers, LA Reed. Mm-hmm. How can people reach you directly on social media, LA Reed, if they want to hit you up? Um LA underscore R E I D. Okay. That's that's Twitter. I don't know the other ones. Okay, that's good. That's right. good. You know that one. That's, you know don't give them everything. Yeah, I don't know. Leave the that rest mystique. That one, you know. Leave that mystique. <laughs> All right, Tracy, how can they reach you? Yo, find me on Twitter. Hit me on Instagram at it's Tracy G I T S T R A C Y G. I'm also on Snapchat. It's Tracy G Snaps, and you can find out what I'm doing by visiting my site, She's Beauty and the Beast dot com. Heather B. For my food and drink recipes, go to the Happy Hour with Heather B dot com. And if you miss any part of Sway's show today, go to SiriusXM dot com backslash on demand i'm at real sway on twitter and instagram sway calloway is snapchat and facebook and then go to sway's universe we always looking for new subscribers yeah. okay so go on do that and tomorrow's show we got cuba gooden jr coming Woo-hoo! by uh saul williams is coming by yep, yep. 
And Oscar nominated Ethan Hawke is coming by as well. The so Hulk. make sure y'all tune in. Uh, sway in the morning until tomorrow. We have nothing left to say. It's Sway in the morning only on Shea 45.